Hello and welcome to another episode of Bio Lessons to Go. I'm Mr. Dove, and today we'll be looking at plant organs, structure, and function. From cacti, which live in hot deserts, to water lilies that grow in a pond, angiosperms are extremely diverse. Despite their diversity, they have many common structural features, including roots, shoots, which include our stems and leaves. Root, uh, the majority of the root system is located underground. The shape of the root uh, takes on kind of, especially at the tips, a triangular shape. Even at the tips of these, they are more of a triangular shape, which allow it to penetrate the soil as it grows. Roots have two main jobs. They're going to anchor the plant um, so that it can have support. Um, like wind and things comes through, they're not going to blow over or blow out. And then the roots need to be able to absorb water and minerals. Um, many roots, uh, they're able to increase their surface area by branching and uh, having at the ends lots of little tiny root hairs. Uh, some uh, roots actually form a symbiotic relationship with fungi to further increase um, that surface area and allow for additional absorption of nutrients. Stem makes up the main axis of a plant. In addition to supporting the leaves, a stem is going to have vascular tissue. It's going to have veins, which are going to allow for material to be transported throughout the plant. So going through uh, this stem here is going to be a series of veins. Um, and over here we can see this is that vascular tissue. Um, we have xylem, which is responsible for transporting water and minerals from the roots to the leaves, because the leaves are going to need water in order to do photosynthesis. The phloem is going to then take the food that's made by uh, photosynthesis from the leaves back down and, and to the rest of the plant. The way typically I remember that, that even though it starts with a pH, the f sound is the same as in food. The phloem transports food. A really important structure for any green plant is going to be the leaf. The leaf is going to be the main part of the plant that's going to carry out photosynthesis. Now, some plants are going to lose their leaves every year, and they're called deciduous. So many of the trees around us, um, those broad leaf uh, trees, they're going to lose those leaves, and so they're called deciduous. Um, but others that don't lose their leaves are called evergreen. Now, around here, our evergreens are usually our conifers, the ones that have uh, needle-like leaves. But if you go to... Um, the uh, tropical areas, we actually have what are called broadleaf evergreens. Um, because they don't have to worry about changes in the weather, um, they can have broad leaves to be able to maximize their surface area for photosynthesis, and they don't have to worry about losing them because their season is tropical year-round. The photosynthetic process um, can be summarized by a basic equation. Plants take in carbon dioxide, much of which you know is a byproduct of what we are breathing out through respiration. So six carbon dioxides, along with water, which is coming from the rain, are going to be combined using the energy of the sun to produce one molecule of sugar. And in the bonds of this sugar molecule is going to be energy. And so that sun's energy is going to be put into the bonds of glucose so that it can be food for the plant and food for us. And then, luckily, as a byproduct of this process, it's producing oxygen as waste. And so it makes six oxygens as a waste product. Now, if you look at this equation, you'll notice that there's a particular relationship to cell respiration. What was it that we took in? food and oxygen. What did we put out? Metabolic water and carbon dioxide. So you'll notice that these equations are sort of reverse of each other. What one needs, the other produces. What one produces, the other one needs. 
Now, in order to perform photosynthesis, plants need to get sunlight, they need to absorb carbon dioxide and water as raw materials for the process. Now, the cool thing is the leaf has that essential architecture, which allows them to gather these things and perform photosynthesis. Now, most leaves have a broad, flat shape, which allow them to have a large surface area to capture the sun's light. Inside, the leaves of cells are chloroplast, which allow them to capture the sun's energy and to make food. If we look at a cross-section of the leaf, we'll find that the middle layer, which is called the mesophyll, has tons of cells, and these little black dots represent those chloroplasts. So in the mesophyll, we're going to have lots of cells that are rich in chloroplasts. In particular, the top layer of the leaf, which is called the Palisades mesophyll, um, is tightly packed at the surface, which is going to allow them to capture lots and lots of sunlight. So once we have our, our sunlight, we need to be able to store that energy somewhere. So we're going to store that in the bonds of glucose. Glucose is made by combining carbon dioxide with water. Now to get carbon dioxide, you need openings and large spaces for gas exchange. If you look down here at our leaf cartoon, you'll notice that there's a lot of open space, which is helpful for storing carbon dioxide. And in the bottom of the leaf, there's actually an opening which would allow such a gas to enter into the leaf. This opening in the leaf is called a stoma. It lets the carbon dioxide in and oxygen and water out. To store that uh, carbon dioxide, we're going to use those air spaces. And those air spaces are found in what's called the spongy middle layer, the spongy mesophyll. Just like a sponge can hold water in its pore spaces, um, these open spaces of the spongy mesophyll, these air pockets, are going to be great places to hang on to carbon dioxide. Lastly, uh, we're going to need that essential water. Water is absorbed from the roots and it moves up to the leaves through the process of capillary action. Because water is a polar molecule, that water is going to form these temporary hydrogen bonds, which allow them to rise up. As water evaporates, it pulls along water uh, like a, a chain, and it's pulled up against gravity, um, and we're able to move that water into the leaf. It moves through those vascular bundles. Within that vascular bundle, we have the xylem, which is going to transport the water um, from the roots up to the leaves. And then once we've completed photosynthesis, we're going to use the phloem to be able to transport that food back down to um, the rest of the plant. Now, plants, they, especially terrestrial plants, they exist in a very changing environment. Um, and so they need to maintain homeostasis just like us. They have to keep a balance, stabilize that internal environment with the outside one. When temperatures are high, plants can lose lots of water. And so the leaf then also has structures that can protect them from losing water. For one, the lower epidermis has tiny uh, cells called guard cells. And these guard cells will open and close to prevent water loss. They do this by filling up with water to close that stoma so that water can't uh, get lost. Um, here we've got a top-down view, and so it kind of looks like a pair of lips that can open and close so that we don't lose water through that pore space. Here's another large blow-up of that. Here's our stoma, and so water is going to move in to our guard cells 
filling it up, making it very turgid so that our stoma will close. Besides our guard cells, the leaf oftentimes is covered by a waxy cuticle. That allows it to be waterproof. The water stays in um, and no water is going to be able to evaporate um, through that large surface area. So on our cartoon diagram, our waxy cuticle is there in yellow. And that's going to cover both our upper, ep upper epidermis and our lower epidermis. So from the roots to the stem to the chloroplast full leaf, each level of the plant structure has a particular way um, to be able to function in order to complete photosynthesis.